to the K River Campground and our review of the Polaris High Lifter 2020. A real test is the water test. How deep can it go? I'm gonna give it a shot here in this river and see. Yeah. I wanted to show you all something. What's up, Oscar? <laughs> what I've got is nothing more than some old vegetables from a salad I had last night for dinner. I thought I'd share them with my friend, Oscar. Isn't that right, Oscar? What do we got there? You like lettuce? Here you go, Oscar. Well, I was all excited about giving him some vegetables. I even saved them all night for you, Oscar. Well, this is Oscar, our resident pig, who apparently doesn't like lettuce too much. And, uh, we have got a little petting zoo here at the River, which is where we're gonna be doing our off-road review of this 2020 Polaris Ranger. So today we are going to be testing the 2020 Polaris Ranger 1000 High Lifter and it's also a crew. The testing will be done here at the K River Campground Moyers, Oklahoma where we've got our own set of ATV trails from everything from rocks to mud to some good open basic trail riding. Overall this has been a pretty good machine but I want to show you all some of the things that I had to do to it in order to get it to where I like it. First of all, we've got a, just a small lift. It was the cheapest lift I could get online. We put that on it. I think it was like a two inch lift. Uh, I'm not positive about that, but we did have to put wheel spacers in it in order for the wheels to be able to have a decent stance. For tires, I added the X-Comp ATR 30s just on the stock factory rims. I think the factory rims look pretty good. I added a sound bar. I think this is necessary on all these side-by-sides for one of the reasons that they're the most fun is, is they become social machines. So always adding a uh, sound bar, big recommendation. Windshield and light bar, two other things I definitely recommend adding. This is the glass windshield. They also have a plastic like half windshield, which is great until it starts to rain. So for rainy seasons, full windshield. For the summer, if it's dry, that half windshield gives you a pretty nice breeze. So you see that yellow underneath there on that, on that suspension? There was a bit, or green, I don't know, yellow or green, there was a bit too much of it on the machine for me. You can see the decals are in that, and there's some stitching on the seats in that, but that whole bumper was that color. The bottoms of the doors there, those metal pieces were that color, and that back bumper was that very bright color. Overall, it was just a little too bright for me, so the first thing I did when I got this thing was have all that powder coated. So if it looks a little different than the ones you see online, well, that would be why, because this is what it looks like brand new from the factory. I know, a bit much, right? So before I get this thing out on the trail and show you exactly how it performs and kind of give it my rating and review, again, remember guys, these are just my personal opinions. I would like to talk to you about the things that I do like and dislike just from a design standpoint, if you will. Probably my number two complaint of this entire machine is this shifter here. It's very difficult to get between drive, first, neutral. They give you your indications here, None down here where you're actually looking, and there's no bump outs or, or sets into each gear. So if you go too hard or too soft, you can go over or you know miss altogether the gear you're looking for. It's kind of a pain. It it gets stuck between the gears more often than I think it should. Another thing I love is the cup holders. Cup holders. Cup holders. I mean a lot of cup holders in this rig. So yes. There are a ton of cup holders in this machine, and that again, kind of like the music, is one of the best parts about the machine to me. I know that may sound a little ridiculous, but that's what this machine is really built for if you ask me. You got three position seating in the back, three up front. That means I can carry six people total, or you know, five plus myself, in this rig at one time. That is a really good thing for me at the campground as I'm taking guests, showing them around the property, and taking them out and showing them where the different trails are on our property. See, one downside to the two bench seats is the longer wheelbase. That will hurt you a little in the off-road. The three-seater where you just have one seat, that one's gonna perform a little better off-road than this one is. You'll get high centered easier here. Now they do make a lot of rigs where the dump bed actually has fold-up seats. 
or they slide forward so that you have seats or a bed option where this one's longer even yet because it's got the bed and both seats full time. Frankly, I like this one because we carry a lot of tools in this bed for working around the campground, hence the old ugly reach hitch on the back, which is hurting my clearance without doubt. The seats themselves are pretty comfortable for bench seating, but of course this is not like a Razor or a Talon or a sport style machine where you get like a bucket seat. The drawback is it's not as comfortable, it throws you around a little bit more off-road, but the plus side is it's easy to get in and out of the machine. You're not crawling over those bucket seats. So originally, the tires that came with this machine were mud tires. They're great if you're trying to get through the mud, but riding around these campground roads, they can really just destroy it. So if you're off-road, they're wonderful, but I went with something a little bit more mild, still capable off-road, but something that's not gonna eat our road and driveways up. Uh, the winch on this thing is pretty good. It's a 4,500 pound winch. And the thing I like most about the winch on the high lifter, opposed to some of the other machines, is this bumper. This bumper gets that winch up high. So if you're in the mud or you're in the water, which really is what this machine is designed for, it keeps that winch up out of it as much as possible. It makes it easier to access it, get to it, and get out there. It's also got this fast wrap bumper. So when you know you're gonna be winching multiple times, you don't have to winch all the way in and all the way out every time in the day. You can just wrap that bumper and it's just this easy to get your cord back out to your destination. You see that right down there? Yeah, that guy. That also is probably one of the weakest links on this entire machine. It's belt driven. Yeah, that guy right there, that will go out on you under extreme loads. Uh, if you're going low speeds and high gear and step on the gas, it'll spin that belt, it'll slip it. it. can get water in it, that can slip it too. And that is gonna give you about a $200 repair if you're bringing it to the shop and probably close to a $100 repair if you're doing it yourself. Of course, all depending on what belt you buy. Other machines on the market are shaft driven and have different style clutches to cope with that. And I think to me, that's a superior system. The belt system is certainly one of the weakest links of this machine. They say there's a 30% increased drivetrain strength. So like those axles, for example, those are supposed to be 30% stronger than the other Rangers on this one. Also the water height, the water goes up. Look at how high the snorkel is. We'll test that later. And all the electronics in this machine are supposed to be water sealed. So you don't have to worry about getting any of your, you know, switches or anything like that underwater. It's all supposed to be watertight underneath that hood. Taking on water is a big thing for this machine. They've set it up for it. And even under the doors, you can see there's a hole there. That's to let the water out as you're going in and out of these creek beds and rivers. Another complaint I have about the machine are these doors. They're super heavy and you gotta slam the heck out of them to get them to close and they often start sagging and shifting and you gotta go back and readjust them again. I think a little more often than you probably should have to. Okay, let's go test this girl off road on the trails here at the Kerr River. So this is the area on the campground where we actually get to take these things and open them up a little bit. It's kind of cleared out. There's not a whole lot of trees. We've got some hay bales stopping you and slowing you down where you need to. But you get to see exactly how a machine like this or any other can perform out here at a little bit higher speeds. Like I said, after lifting this thing, the, the stance was kind of narrow. It looked really skinny and tall. So I did put two inch wheel spacers on both sides, giving it a little bit more stability for the shots just like this. Now, you're not gonna get the suspension in this thing that you get in one of them sport machines, but you can still handle things at a fairly decent speed without getting thrown out of the seat. And the trade-off is, with this, I'm set up more for towing. I can carry actually a fairly large load with this. We use it for trailers all the time around the campground. So like I told you all before, clearance is a big deal when it comes to these side-by-sides, especially when you're running on trails like we have here at the K River. For example, you can see this rock here. I really just don't know how well it conveys on camera, 
but it's probably, I don't know, a good 12 to 16 inches sticking out of the ground here. So we're just gonna take the side by side and go right over it. Uh, if you wanna look at what my actual clearance is, check out this clip I did earlier today. Now the high lifter here, it comes with arched A-arms right from the factory. They're not forward set, but they're arched. So it is better than your standard Polaris Ranger 1000 crew. It's got a higher clearance. Okay, so top speed of one of these machines, again, gonna be very different from your sport machine. We have got a long straight road. I'm gonna pin it and we'll see what we get. Panicked. 56 miles an hour, it started to drop at about 57, back down to 56. Probably go a lot faster if I didn't have these big tires on it, but there's your, there's your speed test. Right there. Yep, right there. The power steering in this thing is one of the biggest issues I'm finding. Anytime you're going up a hill and you're under a load, that power steering locks right up. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm running radial tires. Maybe if I had like a 10-ply ATV tire, it wouldn't be as bad. But this is the second Polaris Ranger High Lifter 1000 in a row that my power steering locks up on me to where I can't even muscle through it. It's almost bound every time I'm under a major load like this. That, my friends, is probably the number one complaint I have about the 2020 Polaris Ranger High Lifter. I can't even, I can't even turn it. The truth of the matter is, I think this machine is best for not only work hauling stuff, and things like that but really it's just that long wheelbase makes for a nice smooth ride down the trail and really it's just all about getting a cooler getting some friends and getting out there and enjoying your day it's not a race machine it'll never do what the race machines will do but it'll pack a bunch of your friends in it'll give you a fairly smooth ride at lower speeds and it'll get a bunch of work done okay the last real test is one i'm sure y'all have been waiting for and that my friends is the water test how deep can it go i'm gonna give it a shot here in this river and see how deep I'm comfortable going. I unfortunately do not have any type of waders or anything like that's gonna keep me dry, so I'm gonna get soaked for y'all's pleasure. I hope you enjoy this. This could get a little scary. So I'm gonna cut in right in there, try to go kind of with the current and see how deep we can get on this thing. All right, how deep into this thing do we wanna go? I think it's actually starting to float. Woo! That's it, man. That, uh, that current picked me up. So it will actually float before it goes to its max top level. It picked me up and it started to sweep me down. I had a I had to cut fast to get back. We almost lost it, the current almost took me. Uh, that was risky, but I hope y'all get the point. They're pretty good in the water. Whew. All right, cut that. <laughs> My battery died, so y'all are getting the clothes on the GoPro. I apologize for the sound. Listen, if you like these types of videos, we are staying busy here. So we'll have a lot more coming at you. Let me clean you up there. We'll have a lot more coming at you over the next couple of weeks, five videos a day, every day. Click that subscribe, and if you already did, that bell notification will let you know when tomorrow's video is out. Polaris Ranger, 1000 high lifter. That's the K River review.